Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Tembi Mutweni and if it's your first time watching us, you're very welcome. And I really hope that you will enjoy this video and it will encourage you to click the subscribe button and join the family. And to my returning subscribers, my loyal subscribers, I love you guys so much and I really, really appreciate the support. All right guys, so as you can see, um, today I'm gonna to be sharing my birth story. I will be inserting uh, some clips of what I was able to capture uh, before my battery died unfortunately after i got my charger um yeah labor was just too intense and so i couldn't <laughs> yeah i couldn't film um after that so but yeah i gave birth at the net net care sunwood park hospital which is in Boxburg. um i specifically chose this hospital because of proximity um i actually wanted to give birth um at um What's it called again? I think it's Ned K. Lin. Is it Lin? No, not, not Lin Ned, but here in, in Benoni. Um, but I looked at proximity because I didn't know what state I was going to be in um, when I was going to the hospital. And I didn't know if I was going to be alone by the time because I don't live with my partner. It's a long distance relationship. So anyways, I gave birth at Ned K. Sunwood Park, which is about 15 minutes away from where I stay. Uh, my expected due date was the 21st of September, but I actually ended up giving birth on the 11th of September, which was basically a week before. <clears throat> so um, a week before I gave birth, which was in the 4th of September, I lost um, a portion of my mucus plug. So now I had been doing, uh, had been doing a lot of research, um, you know, leading up to my labor. Um, of what I could potentially expect on my labor day. So although you can never really tell what will happen on the labor day, but it's always good to, you know, have an idea of what could potentially happen. So anyways, on the 4th of September, um, I lost, uh, you know, some of my mucus plug. Uh, I thought nothing of it because either one of two things could happen. Either one, I could go into labor within 24 to 48 hours after losing my mucus plug, or two, I could... Um, only really going to labor about two to three weeks after you know losing it so i listened to my body and allowed it to sort of tell me what it is that i would need to do next so i waited you know 24 hours nothing happened 48 hours nothing happened so i took it that okay well i guess it's just a sign that my labor is coming soon though so nothing happened that particular week and so up until the following week, which was the Monday of the 11th of September. Now, on that particular day, I was actually scheduled in for my gynae appointment, um, which was supposed to happen that particular afternoon around 1 or 2, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. I don't really remember. Um, but that morning, I woke up around 6 o'clock, like normal when you go and pee. Uh, when I had to wipe myself, um, I found that okay i was starting to lose some more of the mucus plug i really thought nothing of it because i thought well okay if nothing happened last week then what are the chances that something will happen again this week we'll just see i'll just listen to my body once again so i woke up um i took a shower i did my hair um i had really not been taking care of myself honestly during the pregnancy it was hard for me to do just about anything i was just lethargic throughout especially towards the end of the pregnancy and so even my hair was just a mess so that particular day i said okay look i'm going to the doctor and let me just look decent so let me do my hair so i did my hair um and then after all of that i had some breakfast um i watched some tv like it was just you know a chilled morning for me you know um and then around Buma, half past eight then i started experiencing like period like pains um they weren't i'd say they were mildish you know they weren't really painful like or bad or anything like that um but at the same time i really wasn't sure what it was because and it's strange because i've been watching so many of these videos preparing myself but on that particular day it's like i didn't watch anything or i didn't know anything um i had been experiencing breaks and hicks anyways leading up to that day um, and so, but one thing I know for sure was that Braxton Hicks generally happen towards the top end of your tummy um, and not in the abdomen area. Um, or rather, I speak for myself, that's what I was experiencing. So, 
on that day i started experiencing some pains in my lower abdomen area so i thought oh okay could this be uh labor or contractions or you know i mean could i be in labor or could i be in an, in, could i be experiencing contractions so i thought to myself you know what let me not leave anything to chance so around nine o'clock i called the doctor's office um and i said look i think i might be having some contractions and potentially be in labor but i'm not too sure is it possible that we can move my doctor's appointment up to um this morning it's just so the doctor can check me because i'm really afraid that if i leave everything then things can get too intense and by then um you know my partner was coming but he was only going to arrive much later that afternoon around four o'clock so if things got really intense if i left things too later i probably wasn't going to be able to drive myself to the hospital um so okay the uh, receptionist agreed and she said look it's fine i can give you a slot at 10 o'clock the doctor has an appointment at half past 10. so if we can come before then before her first appointment then yeah maybe then you know we'll be able to squeeze you in i said no perfect that's fine i was ready anyways i mean it was around nine o'clock by the time i called them so around half past nine um still having the same mild you know contractions that would come and go um you know they were actually happening within five minutes um and you know they were constant uh, constantly happening within five minutes so okay fine um i then got to the hospital um and mind you i didn't take my my, my nursery bag i mean my baby's bag um or a actually any of my hospital bags i because i thought oh okay maybe i'm just you know imagining things i'm not sure what this is it could just be a sign that i'm probably going to go into labor at some point within this week the week of the 11th um so i thought nothing of it you know um so i left my hospital bags at home and then i went to my doctor's appointment so i arrived there i explained to her what i'm experiencing and what has happened over the past two weeks in terms of my mucus plug and then she's like okay that's fine let's check you know if you know indeed you might be in labor so she does a cervical check guys cervical check is very very uncomfortable like it's it's extremely uncomfortable so they put she put her fingers up my vagina to check how far dilated i am excuse me and by then um i was two centimeters dilated so she's like okay good call oh guys my daughter's right here so um i need to okay so she checks me and i'm about two centimeters dilated and she's like good call you are actually actively in labor so i'm not gonna send you home i'm sending you to the maternity ward and i think in that moment they started to hit me with oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god i'm gonna meet my baby today i'm nervous i'm excited i'm just you know i'm a mixture of you know different emotions um so okay i call my partner i'm like hey by the way uh we're having a baby today <laughs> so he was panicking because it was still quite early in the morning by then he hadn't actually even left uh for like he had he hadn't you know yeah, like he wasn't on his way yet um he was planning on leaving at a certain time um so but anyways i tell him and he's like okay are you okay though um like how far are you what's happening and i'm like no, don't worry i think we still have a little bit of time based on how i'm feeling chances are um, I'm probably going to give birth much later on in the evening. So it gives you a little bit of time to get yourself here. Um, as if I'm a doctor and as if I know, you know, what was going to happen, etc. Because I mean, you know, with labor, you just never really know. Things can be okay now. And then within the next two, three hours, things would become intense. So my partner is like, my partner and I are in a long distance relationship. He stays in, an, in a neighboring country. So yeah, he needed some time to get here. <laughs> so anyways okay um my doctor then says to me look go to the maternity ward i'm going to give them a call and let them know that you know they should expect you so then maybe they can start prepping your your, your labor room i'm like okay that's fine so i go downstairs or down the passage um and i go to the maternity ward when i arrive at the reception i mean at the at the entrance there's a security guard and she's like oh my god sissy you are so gorgeous you're glowing you're so beautiful oh, this pregnancy looks good on you um are you here like you know like how can i help you and i'm like uh, i'm i'm in labor and i was sent here by my by my gynae 
and then she says that uh, she has already called this ward so you guys should be expecting me to arrive and she's like you in labor I was <laughs> Yeah, you look too good to be in labor. Clearly, you might be in the early stages of labor. Yeah, guys, I was already scared. But okay, quite it means things are about to get really hectic, Miss. Anyways, so she lets me in. I get to the maternity ward reception, and everyone's looking at me weirdly. Like, it's okay, and then we're now. Who are you? What are you here to do? I'm like, no, no, no. Uh, I'm in labor and I was sent here by my doctor and you know, I explained the same thing that I did to the security lady and they're like you in labor no ways <laughs> no ways no ways no ways like you're joking and I'm like no 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 I'm in labor I'm just in the early stages of labor and they were like oh, okay we'll see you see all this beauty and this hair and this like you, you looking as good as you, you know as you do it's all gonna come to an end soon as soon as your labor you know intensifies hey guys now i was really scared now because i was like okay can't do, what am i gonna get myself like what have i gotten myself into basically you know but anyways i was trying to remain positive um and you know so fine um the nurse comes and she's like okay let's go to your your, your labor room and she said to me, look, I haven't, you know, prepared the room yet because we weren't expecting you. Um, so just give me some time to prep, um, you know, your bed and get some linen savers and get your, I don't know what they call that, that uniform that you wear, you know, um, in labor. Uh, I'm, I'm going to call it a scrub uh, for lack of a better word. So um, I have to go and get your scrub um and then um also you know basically essentially admit you and there's some paperwork that you need to sign and all of that stuff so she's like by the way did you go to reception the main reception to let, to let them know that um you know we are officially admitting you and booking you into the hospital i'm like well i booked online and she's like no they have to finalize it downstairs at the main reception i'm like okay then she's like well since you're still in a good state maybe you can go while i prepare your room and i'm like okay that's fine so, so i went down to the main reception at the hospital and I told them, okay, well, um, well, I told the lady who was there at the reception, that, look, I'm in labor um, and apparently I'm supposed to come down to you and you're supposed to officially book me in on the system. And then she looked at me, she's like, why did the nurse send you? Um, she was supposed to be the one that came down. Um, but anyway, since you're here, it's fine. Uh, you don't firstly look like anyone that's in labor. I'm like, well, I think it's because I'm in the early stages of my labor, so things are not, things haven't, you know, intensified yet. And she's like, okay, that's fine. And uh, anyways, um, because the nurse is the one who's supposed to do this, I'm not going to um, allow for you as a patient to be down here. Go back to your maternity ward. I will come up to you and do everything that's um, required. I'm like, okay, cool. So the same. So I went back up to the maternity ward. And luckily, by the time that I arrived in my, my room, it was now ready. So she gave me my scrub. I changed into it. Um, and during that time, guys, my um, period pain, or my contractions rather, was starting to, you know, become more clear. So I could feel, okay, now I'm really having, you know, contractions. But they weren't like hectic. It was just like mild contractions. It really wasn't that bad, you know. Um, like, yeah, it was very, very mild. So anyways, I changed into my um, scrub or uniform, whatever they call that thing. Um, and then she ties that, uh, that strap, the heart monitor strap on my tummy, which is very, very uncomfortable. Uh, but this is basically just to monitor, you know, my baby's heart rate and myself. Um, and then during that time after and no, actually after she did that about an hour or so after that um, officially admitting me and having me sign forms and documents and all of that uh, my mom and my sister arrive when they come um, this was just before lunch time just before my lunch time actually yeah they arrived I think around because by then when I was at the doctor's office it was around 10 I left her office around half past 10 I got to the labor ward and all of that that I was doing took about 30 to 45 minutes. So around 11-ish, um, yeah, like around 11, quarter past 11, my mom and my sister arrived because I'd also let them know after speaking to my partner. 
um, that okay I need someone to come to my place and come and bring my hospital bag uh, etc so they came they arrived and then I you know gave them the keys they went to fetch my stuff um, and then uh, during that time that's when I then um, received my lunch because I've now officially been um, admitted I think I've already you know put in the clip for you guys to see all of that hey guys yeah so we're having a baby um yeah it's currently half past 12 I've been here now for six, an hour now I think since I've been admitted I was supposed to be having my normal gynae appointment and then um, I found out that oh actually I'm in labor uh, I'll have a story time to to tell you guys everything that's going on but currently I'm at the hospital um, I've been here for like I said an hour and then um, they're still monitoring the baby's heartbeat so that's with our baby's heartbeat and stuff um, I'm still two centimeters dilated, so it hasn't gotten hectic yet. Apparently, my nurse keeps scaring me and telling me that it's gonna get really hectic still. So, I guess we'll see when the time comes. Uh, but for now, I'm having like mild contractions, it's not too bad, it's, it's a pain I can handle. Um, yeah, we'll see if things get too hectic, then I'll just get some pain relief. Anyways, let me show you guys my room. It's nothing to write home about. I mean, we're at the hospital. It's nothing fancy. Um, yeah, and then I just got my lunch over here. Great. So around uh, 3 p.m., uh, my doctor came for her first round or first visit with me. So she came and she checked on me. Hey, how are you doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm fine. She's like, how are the pains? And she's like, and I'm like, well, not so bad. So she checked on that monitor, that machine to check, you know, what, uh, how my, you know, contractions are coming along. And she's like, good. It's looking really good. It looks like, you know, you're progressing quite well. Uh, but I have to do another cervical check to see, you know, how far along you are. And so she put her fingers up my vagina again, very uncomfortable to check how far along I'm dilated. Um, and I was still at two centimeters at the time. So she said to me, okay, I'm going to come back um, about, you know, two hours from now, which is around 5 p.m. to do another check. And if by then... Um, your labor has not progressed well enough. I'm going to do a membrane sweep. I'm like, okay, that's fine. I'll see you later. She left me there. So I sat there again for about, uh, you know, another two hours. Uh, within the hour after my doctor came, that's when my partner arrived. I was so relieved because I think I was starting to panic to say, okay, I don't want to go through any of this alone. And I know that he really wanted to, to be part of the entire process. Um, uh, he was really amazing, if I'm being honest. Um, very, very supportive on that particular day. Um, I'm really grateful uh, to my partner, honestly. So he arrived. Cool. Um, and okay, we waited together for the doctor to come back around 5 p.m. Uh, that evening, she came back. Um, and she did another cervical check, you know, and by then, before, you know, all of this, 
my uh, contractions were starting to like sort of become a little bit more um you know severe um okay i think severe is too much of a harsh word like it's, it's too much of a heavy word they were starting to you know my contractions were starting to become a bit more painful now um but nothing that i couldn't handle you know i was actually breathing through most of those contractions you know and i was practicing everything that i had learned through the videos that i was watching and TikTok videos and the YouTube videos and the reading up that I had done, you know, the research. So I was breathing through, you know, the, the, the pains that I was, you know, feeling. They weren't too bad, like if I'm being honest. Like by then I was, you know, still able to handle, you know, what everything that was going on. So by then, by the way, it was, um, I mean, by the time the doctor came back um, at 5 p.m., I had now been in labor for about seven hours now um so she checked me again um and she put you know her fingers up my vagina my partner was so traumatized when he saw that because <laughs> you know obviously it was his first time experiencing all of that uh so put her fingers up checked me again and i had only dilated um you know another um what you might call it centimeter which was like three centimeters so all this time that she had left i'd only you know dilated dilated one one centimeter so okay she said to me all right i think i'm going to do a membrane sweep so the membrane sweep is basically just to help induce like you know to to help fast track you know the uh, uh, cervical dilation now guys membrane sweep is basically then taking the hand and basically putting it all up your cervix and literally sweeping you uh, with the hope that it will you know progress the the, the 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 your cervix you know um yeah that was probably the one of the most painful things i've ever experienced in my life membrane sweep is painful like flipping painful like you know, like, I think in my heart and in my head, I was cussing out. I was, yo, that pain. Yo. Guys. <laughs> Anyways, she puts her hand up and she sweeps and she sweeps and she sweeps. And I'm going to go, she's serious. All this time, me and my doctor, we've been laughing. Hey. Come in, sweep heart. No, I you have to put your bums down because I kept lifting, lifting my bums up because of the pain that I was experiencing. Even the nurse on this side, she's like, No, relax, you know, try to take it easy, you know, it's gonna be okay. You know, if you breathe, then at least you know, you won't really feel the pain. It's as uncomfortable. Um, and also, if you start panicking, you're gonna put your baby in distress and you know, so forth and so on. And I'm like, Hey, I couldn't. I hear, I hear you guys, but I'm not understanding what's how I'm supposed to be calm. Yo, guys, membrane sweep. Mm -mm. Anyways, she did that membrane sweep, and then she said to me, "Okay, I'm gonna come back about after another hour and a half, and then I'm going to uh, break your waters if they, you know, um, if they haven't broken by then." And I said, "Okay, cool. I'll see you later." So okay, we waited. By then, my um my contractions were now starting to become more prevalent, and I could now feel okay. Well, no, no, I, I'm in labor now. But once again, I was breathing through most of them, and it really wasn't like you know I was able to handle it. Um, so then okay, about that hour and a half later, she came back. That was now around half past six. She came back and she said, okay, well, clearly your water hasn't broken yet. So I'm going to manually break the waters myself. And I said, okay, cool. So she sticks up some, or she, oh yeah, she, she, she puts in some other stick. It's like a stick that has like a hook and she breaks my waters. And all I could feel was this gush of warmth coming from my vagina. Um, and then she said to me, okay, so I'm going to see you again. Uh, maybe about after an hour but i will tell you now that your uh labor contractions are going to now become really intense and this was the same thing that was echoed by the nurse so okay indeed uh after like a few minutes after it didn't even take long a few minutes after my waters broke ah, 
Hey. 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 Yo. My contraction. <laughs> Yo. It started getting hot in there. Like I was feeling hot. I didn't want noise. Come on, my man. Oh, Mo. He's trying to talk to me. Trying to have conversation. He's trying to catch up. Come. Come on, the nurse. She's also trying to talk to me. And I, I, yeah. Guys. The contractions that I started feeling after that, after my water broke, like within that one hour and a half that I was waiting for my gynae to come back, it started getting painful. Like, okay, I could still talk, like, you know, in between, you know, but it was painful, guys. Like, I have a very low threshold of pain, if I'm being honest. So as soon as those pains started to intensify, and I was just like in my head, I'm like, Lord, am I going to be able to make it through? I mean, if this is, you know, I'm only on four centimeters at the time. Am I going to be able to make it all the way to 10 centimeters? I'm like, Lord, uh -uh. this is too much. This is way too much for me. But anyways, in, in the back of my head, there's that still voice that, okay, you can do it. You're going to be fine. Just, you know, hold on. Fine. After that hour and a half, my doctor comes back. Now it's around half past yeah it's about no no yeah it's around half past seven quarter to to eight so she comes back again again and she's like how are things going and i'm like yay when you are it's bad so what's happening i don't know and then um okay she's like i have to check you again to see how far how far along you are so she puts her fingers up again Ugh very uncomfortable and got more i'm having a contraction at the same time when she's doing this so it was just very painful anyways she puts her finger up and i'm still stuck on four centimeters and she's like no meanwhile when all of this is happening by the way um i've got that heart rate monitor right and we see on the monitor that my baby's heart rate is starting to fluctuate um now according to the nurse um the the maximum healthy heart rate for the baby is like 160 max um my baby's heart rate was starting to like fluctuate like it was shooting up to 180 at some point it was at 200 and my doctor was starting to notice this and she's like do you see that your baby's heart rate is starting to increase uh it's shooting up at rates that are not normal so clearly the baby was in distress at the time as well um when all of this was happening when when my labor contractions uh what happened actually wait when my labor contractions were happening her heart rate would go back to normal and then when i wasn't contracting that's when her heart rate started to shoot up which was very strange it didn't make any sense but when the doctor checked my 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 cervix to see how dilated i am i was still stuck on four centimeters and gamma my contractions are intense like i'm intense to a point where now i could feel okay now this is getting too much for me. Like I don't know if I if I if I'll be able to breathe through <laughs> the pains that I'm feeling. So um then the doctor said, Okay, look, your baby's in distress. What do you want to do? Like tell me what you want. And I'm like, Doctor, anything to save my child, let's just do the C section. Like, let's just do it. And I think also, if I'm being honest, there was an element of being selfish on my side because I was like, This pain is too much. If I'm stuck on four centimeters still. And these pains are this intense, child. I will not make it. <laughs> I was like, no ways. So I'm like, look, do whatever you need to do. Cut me up. I don't know. Whatever you need to do, just take this baby out. Um, and also, you know, obviously considering you know the baby's heart rate, which is number one, her health was very very important. And I was scared because you know you can also lose the baby when the baby's in distress. So okay, fine. She's like, yeah, I agree. Let's do the C-section and right then after i was then being now prepared for my c-section so she left the room she went and notified uh, the nurses to come and prepare me for a c-section so they came in now by the way these were now the evening nurses now the one that was with me in the morning had knocked off at around six o'clock so i was now with the night shift nurses which they were probably the the, the best for me um, much more than the one in the morning amazing 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 nurses i just forgot their names but i would really shout them out they were really really amazing 
so okay anyways they're prepping me so the one nurse came in to come and do um to come and put in the catheter now i watched a video i think it was sipo didewane's uh, birth story and she mentioned how painful the catheter was for her it was one of the most painful for her and i was now scared i'm like i'm going through contractions already as it is now i'm going to have a catheter that's probably going to be extremely painful excruciating like you know like painful um, I remember when she came and I said to her, please, 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 please just be <laughs> gentle with me. And she just laughed and she was like, no, man, the catheter is not that painful. Like, don't worry, you'll see for yourself. And I'm like, mm, I've heard so many stories about this. So, hey, then she's like, no, don't worry. So she put it up. Ah, guys, I didn't even feel anything, if I'm being honest. I think maybe I was comparing it to the pains, just uh, gentle contractions. And if I'm comparing it, nothing can be compared to contractions, guys. Like that pain, uh -uh. like nothing can be compared. So anyways, um, okay, she puts the catheter up and fine, um, everything was okay. And then the other nurse came and she came with some forms and documents that I need to sign and fill. So my partner filled in most of that and then I just signed. Um, and then now I was being uh, transferred to the bed that would wheel me to my uh, to the theater room so and during that time guys i'm contracting like like not even hanyani like how old come the nurse is talking to me she's trying to get information for me come my partner is filling in the form he's trying to talk to me like it's like 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 everything was just yo like somebody next and i couldn't shout and just be like shut up to everybody because they're there to help me you get me um so anyways fine um i get wheeled to uh, the waiting room while the doctors were preparing the, the theater room so uh, in the theater room we had a couple of doctors it was the anesthesiologist that was there it was the pediatrician it was some of the other midwives and all the nurses and then it was my doctor and she works together with another one called dr mokoni um, they were working together with my uh, uh, um, with my incision basically so it was a really great team everybody there was so amazing like really 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 amazing um i think i enjoyed the anesthesiologist the most he was such a sweet guy very funny as well i think he was trying to make things easy for me and try to calm me down and so that i'm not too stressed out so i got wheeled in and then my partner actually waited outside um while they were busy with the epidural injection now i was also expecting the worst with the epidural injection i was expecting to like you know to be screaming or in pain of, of some sort but if i'm being honest it, it like it literally felt like a pinch like it literally felt like i was just being pinched i remember when before he put it in i said yo please be nice and then he laughed and he's like no it's not that bad you know and so he was talking to me actually throughout the time that he was busy with the injection and then when he was done he was like yeah we're done and i'm like really is that it i said it so loudly everyone in the room started laughing because they were like what did you expect and i'm like no i mean i've seen and i've heard stories uh, from the various videos that i've watched and stories that i've heard you know that uh you know the epidural process is very painful guys it, there's no pain there like it really it, like it literally felt like i was just being pinched um so and i guess maybe everyone's experience is 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 not the same i guess but yeah anyways so fine they transferred me from where i was like yeah they, they transferred me from where i was uh getting the, the epidural onto you know the operating bed and by the way the epidural kicks in like immediately because i remember i was still contracting during the time just before he gave me the epidural and i said to him doc like please this pain needs to go away like how soon does the epidural like kick in and he's like immediately i'm like okay cool so he did that and instantly um you know i could feel that i can't feel my legs now i was numb like I, uh, my pains went away um so he checked me again to say okay are you feeling anything i think he tried to pinch me on my feet or something i don't know but he was somewhere down on the other side and he was trying to see if it's working or not and yeah he did that and so as you know uh the doctors are busy they're having a whole fat chat they have conversations they're laughing and talking about 
what the what happened last week catching up and I'm sitting down here. I'm nervous. I'm stressed because my baby, my baby was in distress. I was wondering to myself if my baby was okay. Um, hey, sweetie. I'm with my partner. He's sitting here next to me, um, and I'm praying and I'm saying, Lord, like I pray that my daughter is, is well. Um, and. As soon as I heard my baby crying, I, oh man, I, I got so emotional. Um, it was the happiest day, one of the happiest days of my life. Um, I want you to take up all those men. Yes. Hi, good morning. Good evening to you. Uh, <laughs> can I turn her the This part. Oh, she pulled. Yeah, yeah she pulled she... already. <laughs> Which is good. You want to cut it? <laughs> we can take a video of you. <laughs> She's fine. <laughs> Dad, he's always asking if you're breathing <laughs> so, or so, so, so. why you're not crying. Of course. A very long road, mm -hmm. hey. So, so some, some doctor told me that at some point. Um, I was at ease and I was relieved, and I remember just exhaling and just saying thank you, Lord. Um, and yeah. On the 11th of September at 5 to 9, 2055, my beautiful baby girl was born and her name is Liana, which means rain, um, which I like into blessings. So it's rain of blessings because she really um, is a blessing in my life and um, she came at a season of rain which is september so i think everything just is so interconnected um and yeah guys um we've come to the end of the video i really really hope that you enjoyed the story if you did please like comment and subscribe uh, for those who haven't and i will see you in my next video